Welcome back everybody to my home office. Today we are going to do part one of a series of instructional videos on how to use SongMaker in Chrome Music Lab. Yes, this is gonna be multiple parts because SongMaker is the most powerful and most versatile tool of the set. Let's go ahead and open up Chrome Music Lab and you will see SongMaker is the very first one that we see and we're gonna open that up right now. The reason this will take a few videos should be clear very soon. Your interface looks a little bit like the Melody Maker on top, but a lot more complex to start. And then on the bottom, it'll look a little bit like the Rhythm Creator. So if you haven't used those tools yet, it'd be a good idea to go back and try those tools first. The upper part here has a bunch of squares, of course, and the squares represent beats and fractions of beats. Each part of this interface that is different colors, so this, this white part, the gray part, this white section, and this gray section, those are measures in four in the default settings. There are settings we can change, we can make different lengths here. Uh, but the default setting has, this is four counts right here, this is four counts, this is four counts, this is four counts. The colored squares will light up when you click notes onto them, just like Melody Maker. So I can make a scale going up. Now each of these is an eighth note. So these are half a beat. So this is one and, two and, three and, four and. And that is one measure of one and, two and, three and, four and. And we will go ahead and play that major scale down in the next measure. Our melody is being played by a marimba. You can change that setting, but we're just gonna stick with the defaults for now for this first part. So we can play our piece right now and listen to it. Of course, that's just a major scale going up and down. We're gonna restart, that will clear everything out. So we have melody up here and we can stack notes. We can have this going in thirds if we'd like to. And I can click intervals and you can have um, several different intervals playing at the same time. This is going to sound a little bit like something that you may have um, you may have done this in a piano exercise. Sorry, it's hard to focus on both things, but this is um, thirds going up. So an exercise like that would have sounded a little bit like something you do as you're getting comfortable with using multiple fingers on piano. Uh, let's restart it again, and uh, let's put a familiar melody on here. Oops. I can click that one off if I make a mistake. Let's take a listen to this melody. I'm going to move that back over here. And we'll see if that is the melody that we need. And that's, of course, the melody that we're looking for, the beginning of Beethoven's Ode to Joy. So there's a melody we can work with, and we can add percussion tracks to it. So down here at the bottom, you can see the larger circles are the downbeats. Those are the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The smaller dots are the upbeats, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and all the way across. Um, we are using electronic drums right now. You can change that setting as well, but this is gonna sound a little bit like a dance beat uh, played with the marimba. So we're gonna play the bass, uh, bass drum or the bass note and then the snare drum sound on the upbeat. So it's gonna be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. You're gonna hear this playing with your melody. All right, let's take a listen to see what we have. And just like that, we have the very beginning of Beethoven's Ode to Joy. Let's go ahead and finish this one off. And we will continue this same drum pattern all the way through to the end. And we will have a completed section that can loop. We can make a looping melody from this. Let's take a listen and see what we've got. And you can see these are rests in the melody. I've left those blank on purpose because our melody does need that rest right there. Uh, there are some limitations to what you can do here, but there is a 
ton of settings that we can play around with as we go on to the next few parts. That's going to do it for part one of this video. So hopefully in the next day or so, you can work on making some things and the basic settings, and then we can watch for the next few videos where I'm going to show you some of the more advanced features where you can change the length of your song, the pulse, the meter, the speed, and the instrument sounds, and even save your work and share it because I would love to see some of your creations. I do hope that everyone is staying safe during our break away from school here, and we are able to get in touch with each other again soon.